welcome to Landscape Like a Pro Prep Time. This is Raglan, a next generation landscaper. Do me a favor before we get into the video. Uh, subscribe to the channel, leave a big thumbs up, and leave a comment. All feedback is good feedback in my opinion. Um, when I uh, start doing my beds, I always like to define my edges beforehand. Um, I always like to use a spade because uh, the spade always gives a nice, sharp, crisp uh, uh, look, as you see here. Um, if some people like to use uh, uh, edgers, like when you're edging up the, the lawn. Um, some people like to use regular shovels. Um, but it's various things uh, people like to use, but I don't like to use anything gas-powered. Um, I like to use the spade. Uh, you can either use do it this way, or I have another video uh, that's uh, pertaining to this called details, and it'll show you another way where you can, you know, step on it, kick it away, and stuff like that to give you uh, uh, nice fine edges without, you know, having to bend over, without having to uh, 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 put strain on your back or anything like that. But I like to use a spade because, you know, when you're dealing with, you know, gas powered and stuff like that, you don't want to hit anything that may be underground, like irrigation, like uh, uh, tubing, uh, PVC pipes for drainages, as you'll see uh, later in the video. Um, they have uh, drainage that's coming from the house all the way down and into the bed and you don't want to take a chance of hitting anything and busting anything open um because you know we we, do, we don't want to replace anything so you know when you're doing your beds make sure you do those trenches first just to outline uh give you a defined look of how you want your beds to look and then you know proceed um when pulling the weeds out always make sure you get them by the roots um, I like to do it, you know, have my gloves on. Oh, make sure you got your gloves on, all right? You never know what you're going to run into when you're dealing with in nature. <laughs> but um, I like to, you know, pull them by the roots. Uh, some people like to use hand trials. Um, hand trials are good um, when dealing with this, or if it's, you know, easy like it is right here. You can always uh, use your hands and just pull them up by the roots. Um, and then they have uh, lilies. Uh, she has uh, rose bushes. She has um, hyacinths, uh, as you're about to see. Uh, I'm gonna flip the camera around right here. Um, right there, she has hyacinths that's, that are in there. So you wanna be able to pull the weeds out um, by the roots. So you can distinguish uh, uh, the plants from the ground and you want a nice need of burn. One thing you don't want to do is, is just, you know, half do it and pull these weeds out and not by the roots and you're going to be coming back, you know, every week, every two days and, and, and re-pulling the same weeds that uh, you could have got the first time. You know, and I know it can be, you know, a tedious process, you know, when you're dealing with you know, pulling weeds, especially, you know, in the springtime, especially, you know, um, during the rainy seasons and stuff like that. Yes, you know, they come up like wildfire and they just, you know, got a mind of their own and they just want to come in and they want to take over. I, yeah, I totally get it, you know, but, you know, when you're do doing, you know, the prep for your beds, um, you want to make sure that you get everything by the roots, okay? Just so you don't have to, you know, keep coming back. Just so you don't have to, um, you know, just keep coming back. And then, you know, a lot of people like to uh, uh, hit it down with the weed whacker and then try to spray, you know, certain weed killers, you know, in the beds to keep the know roots from growing and stuff like that from the weeds from growing i don't like to do that per se because you'll take a chance at killing all your plants out and stuff like that so and that and that's not what you want to do 
okay? So once you pull everything out by the roots, just take your fine rake and any debris that's left over or any weeds that you may have missed, just go ahead and take your fine rake, rake everything up and uh, to make a nice clean, you know, slate for your bed because you do not want you know, a lot of trash in your bed. You don't want uh, a, a lot of debris in your bed when you go to mulching because um, it, it just won't give you a, a nice, smooth, and neat appearance, okay? And then, you know, just make sure everything is smooth, find out, picked out, you know, and as you see, you know, as you define uh, the beds out, um, you may want to go on the outside on the grass part and break that down just in case you got anything uh, on the grass because, you know, you just don't want to uh, uh, have stuff, you know, just that's just on the grass and it's just not going to give you uh, a need of it. But you want your beds to be as smooth as possible. Uh, in this process here, you know, some people like to, you know, spread soil conditioner down just because, you know, they may be ready to plant something. Or they want to help out, you know, the existing beds, you know, the plants that's in there in the beds. Um, what I like to do is, you know, if they don't plan to plant anything and they got existing beds and stuff like that, uh, uh, plants in the beds. I just like to go ahead and throw down some holly tone to feed them, you know, make them nice, nice, you know, uh, uh, pretty, get the root strong. Okay. Uh, this rose bush was coming through the fence. Um, so I knocked on the neighbor's property to make sure it was okay if I cut it, you know, off of, you know, uh, uh, the customer's uh, property. And they said it was okay, but always get, you know, confirmation from, you know, the neighbors to cut anything that's on their property. Because, um, you know, they can be a little finicky about that, you know. But um, you want, I, you know, some people like to go ahead and take their pronish shears and just, you know, just cut away but you know when dealing with rose bushes I like to take my time take my hand steps and make nice precise cuts down to the Y um, reason being you know you don't want to take a chance of getting any you know diseases you don't want to take a chance of you know jagged edges you know when, when you get those diseases and those jagged edges you know allows for a lot of fungi and everything else to come into your bushes so I, I just like to take my time and take my hand snips and go ahead and just, you know, cut them down to the wide, make nice, precise cuts. And to make everything look nice, you know, and, 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 and well managed. But always, always get permission from the neighbor before cutting anything that's, you know, on, 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 on their property. Because, you know, they're come by and, and later, you know, have a lot of mouth and say, hey, you know, you didn't, you know, notify me that you was going to cut my bush and this and that. Even though it's on the neighbor's side, you know, they'll, 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 you know, just come around and just act nasty with it, you know. So just make sure that, you know, you get, you know, permission from them. That way you are free, free and clear and, and, and everything okay and good to know. Now here, you know, I just, you know, take a couple bags of mulch and uh, just sprinkle it around. You know, uh, for this, you know, size bed, I just went ahead and got, you know, like 10, 12 bags of mulch. Because uh, I did the front too as well, you know, and I did the back, you know, pretty heavy. Uh, when mulching, make sure you got, a, you know, your mulch at least three inches thick. Um, some people like three inches, some people like two and a half, some people like two. You know, it all, all, all depending on your preference, okay? Um, we're using the red mulch because they have alley cats that will come in and, and, and they have a problem, they did have a problem with raccoons. So they want to be able to see if anything's in the bed when they come out and, and, and sit on their deck. Uh, when they come out into the backyard, you know, just to walk around. They want to make sure that nothing's hiding in the bed. Um, uh, and something for them to startle them 
when they come in, you know, in, in the beds. Because they, they will come in and they will just lay, you know, in the beds like like they live there. Or have to but, you know, when you're using the red mulch, the red mulch, you know, has, you know, that pop to it. It brightens up and livens up the home. And it allows you to see anything that's in the beds, whether it's, you know, snakes, whether it's raccoons, whether it's, you know, cats, you know, whether it's a, you know, a rat or something like that. Whatever, whatever the case may be, you will be able to see what's in your bed. Okay, when you're using the red mulch, I'm a big fan of the red mulch. You know, and I try to encourage that for customers that um, live, you know, by the woods. Uh, uh, that live by alleys, um, that live, you know, right next to uh, maybe a, a junkie property next door, you know, because you know whether whereas though you have junkie or or, or vacancy, uh, that's you know leading for you know animals and rodents and stuff like that. So any anything like that, I push for the red mulch. That way, they will know when something's in your bed, you know, when they have uh, uh, the more modern look, look with the brown mulch, uh, you can, but you know, you'll have to look a little hard, you know. You have the black mulch, you're definitely gonna have to look hard, you know, when you're, you know, dealing with, you know, stuff like that. So always, you know, go and push for the red mulch, uh, just, so they can uh, uh, be aware of what's in their beds. Cause you know, nobody wants to be startled. Uh, nobody, you know, wants to be surprised, you know, when they, you know, walking into their, you know, into their yard. Okay. And, and once again, you know, some people like to, you know, when they do the mulching, they like to, you know, take their rakes and they like to, you know, fan it in with the rakes and stuff like that. Um, I do that sometimes too, you know, I'll use the fine rake or the iron rake, yeah, you know, but sometimes I like to get, you know, hands on and sometimes I like to, you know, just spread it out with my hands, you know, either way works, you know, and try to keep as much mulch off of the grass as possible. The trench that you made, um, if you're not sure on how to make a trench, um, Go to uh, Landscape Like a Pro Details and it'll show you a step-by-step -step on how to get, you know, proper trenching, okay? This is the final effect of it. Uh, as you can see, I raked all the mulch off of the grass, you know, to give it a nice, neat appearance. That's what I was saying, you know, beforehand, okay? I hope you this was useful for you. I hope, you know, you can use this for your beds, okay? This is Raglan coming from Next Generation Landscaping. Keep persevering by any means necessary. And then once again, you know, thank you for tuning in. If you hadn't subscribed, please subscribe to the channel. If you already subscribed, thank you. All right. Leave a comment, big thumbs up, help out the channel a little bit. And until the next time, see ya.